Are you ready? I need some tinnies. Want me to grab them? Green and gray, pink and gray. Green. Come on in. Water's fine. Okay, okay, hold on. Nope, you gotta get the back. You gotta get the back. Hey, you're getting my new shirt dirty. Ta-da. Are you trying to do the... The like. <laughs> <laughs> What's up everybody? My name is Aaron. First and foremost, I want to thank you guys for stopping by today's video. We've had some ups and downs already for the day. If you don't follow me on Twitter, we've been dealing with the situation where the douchebag charged back $300 donation, which is fine. If he wants to go out there and donate to people and then just take it back to have that like 20 seconds of fame, that's cool, whatever. But he tried to have a, <laughs> a chargeback fee of $20 per donation they, they did to take my actual money. Well, PayPal is fighting that. They have already reimbursed me for that. So thank you, PayPal, for that. So we had to deal with that today. And I got some bad news for you guys today. I'm gonna make sure I talk about it today. I'm gonna make sure I inform you guys on it today. But we are taking back the A7S Mark II. Now, before people get pissy with me in, in this video and stuff, because that one video where I brought back the Lumix G7, please understand that these are just my opinions. These are just how I interact as a videographer slash part-time photographer and whatnot and how I go about with my day with video cameras and whatnot. So don't fucking crucify me for my opinion. Just maybe listen to it and understand it. Not that there was like a any serious, serious problems with the A7S R2. The biggest thing there was autofocus for sure. Autofocus is trash. Autofocus is trash compared to the A6300, A6500. Let's put it that way. It does have more of a softer film look to it. But honestly, I feel like unless you're somebody that actually is into film, you don't even notice the difference because they kind of tested some people and there are some days where I used the A6300, the little cinematography stuff, and people were like, oh my God, the, the new camera is amazing. And I'm like, ah, oh, you totally fell for it. You totally fell for it. I'm starting to feel like, especially after like running into, uh, into Jess yesterday, this photographer that we were working with yesterday, she's... I love her photos. Megan doesn't like some of like the kind of like contrast the and, and the edits because she's very edgy, but she takes good photos. She takes, a, she captures the moment and she uses the most like, you know, so many people would be like, so many people who act like they know this and that and are like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm I, you know, I'm a professional. You know, they would be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're doing that or using yeah. that. She captures the fucking moment though. She has such a good reputation on this area, and unfortunately, she's stopping because there's she feels like there's no creativity. But it's just it's a great comparison as to what we dealt with last night too. Now, like the A7S Mark II is an amazing camera. It is 100% an amazing camera. But when I've been using the A6300 for months, for about what six months now, and have accommodated my lifestyle around this. Um, one of the biggest factors with the A7S Mark II turned out to be low light. Like low light's amazing on that. Some people don't even know cameras and know that the A7S Mark II low light is amazing. But here's what I found myself realizing yesterday. We spent 12 hours at the wedding yesterday. 12 hours during the, of the day recording and stuff. Out of all those hours, only am I dealing with low light of maybe two or three hours of it. And in all reality, those two to three hours can, can be controlled by either putting a LED on top of the camera, by putting uh, a couple soft boxes around, like the light can be controlled. And when I say like low light, when I compare this A6300, for example, to the A7S Mark II for low light, it's not like this camera is fucking garbage in low light. Like this, this camera still does good in low light. Basically, most customers are pleased with the result. Us filmmakers, you know, people that understand shit, we may see, more noise in the blacks or something and, and we're like oh my god that's unprofessional to us but in reality you know what i've learned from yesterday with the photographer and, and what i've learned from you know using a 2700 dollars camera versus a uh, now 800 hundred dollar camera you know camera body only is it doesn't necessarily come down to our hobby and what we as photographers and videographers believe and like what we're just so like oh you know i know this and that and i use this and that but it a lot of time comes down to are you capturing the moment and giving the couple what they want because that's what they give a shit about so it's, it's just a great example or a great reason of why i'm bringing it back my biggest thing is do i really want to spend an extra 2700 dollars on just the camera body to have better low light situations when in reality it's just like why not perfect my craft with the tools that i can have you know what i mean so we're bringing back the a7 smart 2 an amazing camera highly recommend it 
but I'm gonna have to stick with the A6300, A6500 for now until uh, maybe the A7 Mark III comes out uh, with, with Sony. We'll see what that does. Maybe has some better autofocus. That's, that's big with me. Autofocus is huge with me. When it comes down to video, I, I did a lot of manual focus last yesterday. I had Sony native lenses on my A7S and it's still, it just compared to the A6300 on a Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4, like the thing is just, it snaps, you know, where I want it. And that's what's great about the A6500 is the touchscreen option. You know, I can just, I can just touch it to where I want it. So our A7 Mark III may be a little different. It may have a, a touchscreen. It may have a, a higher megapixel camera or may have a higher megapixel sensor. It may have a better autofocus, like phase detection. I've heard that it's gonna have like 690, which will make it insane if it does, but it's not out yet. So I, I can't, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna take my chances right now on a camera that doesn't exist. So we'll just roll with what we have and uh, keep working with it. So, uh, welcome back to the A6500. Actually, they, they had a great deal going on with the 6500, and I just wanna kinda of talk real quick as to why I not only traded in the A7S Mark II, well, I've already explained that, but then why, instead of me just staying with the A6300, why I also got the A6500, a camera that I've already tried. One, they had a good deal going on with it right now to where I got a lens with it as well. Like, it was packaged itself, so I'm just gonna sell that lens, brand new. And then we also got a bag with it as well, so it's like, oh, $30 bag. Yeah, extra stuff that we got with it, so we'll just be able to sell that, make some of the money back uh, with it. And then, um, there were just a couple things that, with that, and since I'm making the upgrade, I was gonna end up getting a new A6300 body anyways, just cause I've had it so long. I eventually want that to be my secondary shooter once I make the decision on if I wanna get the A7 Mark III when that comes out, or if I just want two A6500, A6300 bodies and work with those. So I decided uh, for now to at least make the couple hundred, $300 upgrade to this camera here and uh, roll with the A6500, get the image stabilization back. And the big thing with me is the touchscreen. I, 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 I really did like the touchscreen with it. I just couldn't justify paying 500 extra dollars for just for a touchscreen and stabilization. So that's why I got the gimbal. Now that I've had a few weddings under my belt and I got my name out there and I've made a little bit of money back, I can justify it a little bit. But at the, I, like at the time when we tried this out, remember, we just could not justify spending an extra $500 moving up from the 6300 to the 6500 over stabilization. Just continue a day of venturing around. Good yeah, Ikea. Ikea for the first time ever. Yeah, an Ikea. Check out Ikea. Uh, check out Micro Center. I'm about to get rid of uh, some of my monitors and maybe either get an ultra wide or downsize the size of them and get rid of my current ones. By the way, guys, again, no hate. Understand that this was just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know if you guys had any uh, other camera suggestions, anything that you guys have come across. Uh, I'm definitely not a, a Panasonic fan just because of the Micro Four Thirds. That's just, again, personal preference. So you don't have to recommend like, hey, go, go to Panasonic. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to Panasonic. I'm pretty set on Sony. I think uh, I think this is gonna be a good combo and I think by the time the next wedding season hits, especially next year, I'm gonna be more uh, more wedding, or I'm gonna be more video freelance next year with a lot of this stuff that we've got deposits for for next year. I'll actually be able to take a look into having a more professional rig, I guess you'd say, even though I think this will work fine. So just go from here.